Hi and welcome to my channel. In today's coding tutorial, I will show you how to add a CSS animation to your input fields when the user clicks or taps over one of them. To illustrate, this is what the finished project will look like. I am going to start off with a basic HTML file. In the head, I have the CSS links and right before the closing body tags, I have the JavaScript file. I also have live reload switched on, so every time I save changes, the browser window on the right updates. Currently, we have no content, so we can only see a blank screen. Let's add the necessary HTML. I am adding an h1 and then the form, which will contain our input fields and buttons. Each input field will be contained within a div with the class input container to which we will be applying the CSS animation. Inside it, I am nesting a label with the class SR only. My goal is to not actually show the labels on the screen, but have this descriptive information available for users who use screen readers. It makes it easier for them to understand which information is required for which input field. Next, I am adding an input field with the type email, ID email, and some placeholder text. This I am repeating for the password field, quickly replacing email with password. If you are using VS Code, you can hold the Alt key while clicking on words and it will allow you to select multiple ones and then type in several places like you can see me doing on screen. Finally, I am adding a div with the class TextWrite, which will have a button nested inside. With this, the HTML part of our project is done. As you see, the style is very bare on the right, but we'll add CSS next. To save time, I am pasting in some generic style rules which don't relate to the CSS animation, and I will quickly go through them. At the top, I am importing the Google font poppins, which I will link in the description. I am also declaring some variables in the root, which we will be using throughout this project. With the asterisk selector, I am resetting the styles for each element by specifying margin and padding as zero and box sizing as border box. To the body, I am assigning some padding, poppins as the font, a dark background color, and a light text color. The H1 also gets some basic styles, including text color, font size, and text align. The SR only class ensures that the label text is not displayed on screen, but is still visible to screen readers. I have taken these rules from the Tailwind CSS documentation and will link to it in the description in case you are interested. Finally, the text right class aligns the button to the right of its container div. Let's start styling the input fields now. Each input should have a padding of 1 rem so it becomes taller and there is more space between the text and the edges. It should be the full width of its container, have no border and border radius, and have a dark background color. If users type text in, this should be displayed with our Poppins font. On focus, I want to remove the outline and box shadow the input field gets, which you can see appear when I click on the input fields. Let's also style the placeholder text. You can select these with colon colon placeholder. I want the placeholders to be more visible, so I am changing the text color to a lighter one. I am also changing the font to Poppins instead of the default one. Then I am adding a padding of 2 pixel to the divs with the input container class. The outline you saw at the beginning will be placed in this 2 pixel padding area. If you omit this, the border will not be visible as it will disappear behind the actual input field. Additionally, I am also adding a margin so there is space between the fields. Next, we'll draw the border. For this, we are going to use the background image property. This can take a URL to an actual image or you can specify a gradient. In this tutorial, we will be using the linear gradient property. I want the gradient to go from left to right. Now, I don't actually want to create a gradient with two different colors, so I am adding the same color as the start and end point. We also have to specify its position with background position, which takes values for the x and y axis. This line should start in the top left corner, so I am setting both of them to zero. Then we also need to state how big this background should be. The first value we set is the width, in this case 100%, and the second is the height, which is 2 pixels. 
Finally, I am also adding background repeat, no repeat. When I save the changes, you can see that both of our inputs have a line at the top. To get the border effect, we need to add three more linear gradients to the background image. We can do this by adding a comma behind the first one and then specifying the other ones. The second background image will also be a linear gradient. I am changing the direction to bottom here. It should start at the top right corner, so for x-axis I am adding 100% and for the y-axis it stays at 0. The line should only be 2 pixels wide on the right side of the input. The height should be however 100%. I'll quickly add two more gradients to the background image property. The third one should start at the bottom right corner, so the position will be 100%, 100%. The fourth one should start at the bottom left corner, so you can add 0 and 100% here. For the background size, we want the third line to be 100% wide and 2 pixels high. This fourth one should be 2 pixels wide and 100% high. Now if I save, you can see that the input fields both have a border. We can do the animation next. I am starting off by defining the CSS animation with add keyframes and then giving it the name animate in. To achieve the final result, we will be animating the background size. At 0% it should be invisible, so I am setting all the values to 0, 0 apart from the first one where I left the height as 2 pixels. You can however set it to 0 as well, it should not make too much of a difference. At 25% I want the top line to get drawn, so I am editing the first value to 100% 2 pixels. At 50% the second line should get drawn, so I am adjusting the second rule to be 2 pixels and 100%. At 75 the third one will get drawn by adding 100% 2 pixels and finally at 100% the animation will complete with drawing the fourth line. Let's test it by assigning the animation to the input container div. For this, I am using the animation name animate in and animation duration of 1 second. As you can see, it works. Of course, we only want the CSS animation to get triggered when the input field gets focused. To achieve this, we will need to use JavaScript to apply a class to the input container divs. The class that I want to add is called outline and only when this is applied should the animation run. For this, I am specifying the rule dot input hyphen container dot outline which selects all input containers which have the outline class added to them. It is important that there is no space between input container and outline as that would change the meaning of the selector to select all outline classes that are nested inside an input container. The animation and background image related rules I am pasting inside this selector. In the JavaScript file, I am attaching an event listener to the document. The event we will be listening for is called DOM content loaded. This ensures that the JavaScript doesn't get executed before the page is done loading. Then inside I am selecting each input field with query selector all. As this returns multiple elements, I am looping through these with a for each loop where I am assigning an event listener to each of them. The event we will be listening to in this case is called focus and it is triggered every time one of the inputs gets clicked on or tapped over with the keyboard. As a callback we will specify a function to which we pass the event object. With this event object we will then call the apply border function which we can define next. The apply border function takes the event as the argument. For this event object we can find out which input field was clicked on. This can be done by accessing the property e.target. Of course the animation should get applied to the parent, so we can use e.target.parent element to get the container div. We can then add and remove the outline class from the element by using classList.toggle and passing the class name in. If I save and click on the input field, you can see that the border gets animated in. Only problem is, when I click away, the outline doesn't disappear. Currently, I need to click on the input field again for it to get removed. We can solve this easily by attaching another event listener to the input field. I am quickly copy-pasting our first add event listener and instead of focus, we will be listening to the blur event. 
This fires when the input loses focus, so when the user clicks or taps away from it. Now it works as expected. I'll quickly add some button rules too, just to finish the look. I'll remove the outline and box shadow on focus here too, and then I'm copy pasting some basic rules in. And this is our project done. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe for more web development videos. The source code I have linked for you in the description, but if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I will try to answer. Thanks for watching and have a great day!